Hello, folks. Brandon Chapman with you today. It is a February 19th video for uh, Theo Trade. We're talking about what? Uh, we're talking about uh, the move in Microsoft today, or rather the announcement about the major on a one chip. Again, maybe changing the, the, the quantum computing space, at least maybe for the next few days. At least that's what the market, the, uh, the option market is telling us. Uh, so as we look at uh, Microsoft, again, what did they announce? Well, apparently they made a breakthrough. It's called the Majorana chip. It's the first chip. It's going to be bigger. It's going to be better. It's going to be faster. Using a discovery that occurred in the 1930s, we're not going to necessarily spend a lot of time on what it is, more about its impact. So while Microsoft is up one and a quarter percent today, a nice little bid off of lows, the bigger opportunity may be with the quantum computing space, suggesting we may not be years, decades away, but maybe years away from this kind of technology. And we're using the, the options market to really direct our attention. As you look over here, top performers say we got microchip, for example, up a nice 10% or close to 10%. Uh, we got uh, analog devices, NXPA on, all this stuff. Marvell, for example, seeing big moves today. And so, again, you might not wonder, well, why are they moving? Well, that goes back to that. But the backdrop of it is also the fact that, look, we're seeing significant option activity amongst these stocks and that's a big deal so we're going to go to the scan tab here and the focus of the search is looking at specifically at information technology and this may be bringing in some stocks that aren't exactly uh um quantum computing but a lot of these are involved with the semiconductor space so for example we talked about mchp a seven march 70 call up 1100 percent today again we're seeing these calls are being bought and that just reflects from yesterday's close to the current price. Uh, you got QUBT, 205%. Again, we're seeing big moves. Those 850 calls being bought. You've got, uh, you know, you got a lot of MBS, SMCI, for example, a number of calls being bought today. 20,000 contracts traded on the 28 Feb 68 call option. So you just walk through this list in here. QUBT, for example, uh, this, this company is up 8%. And uh, where's the options on this one? It's right here, the 850 calls for the 28 Feb. Now, why are we looking at these? Certainly we got the quantum computing angle that we're looking at here, but in actuality, it's what's called gamma squeeze. And when I say gamma squeeze, what I'm talking about is that the call option activity can lead to a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? A positive feedback loop. And then you also pair the fact that these companies have high short interest, it adds kind of a powder keg that could move these companies in the very near term. So one stock I've been hot and cold on is RGTI. Uh, so for example, back here as the stock was moving, I walked through all of the long call activity all the way up, and then all of a sudden the bearish activity that materialized uh, right at the end of the year and why the stock may drop. Well, a lot of times when you get these parabolic short squeeze moves, yeah, we try to retest it. We tried to reclaim it. We faded back today. Yeah, we're up 6%, but this is a really volatile stock. But what's going on today? We look at the February expiration here in RGTI. And what do we find? So we look out here at like the 1050 strike. We can kind of see it moving out of the money. There's just a lot of buy side activity in the call options today. Notice 39% traded the ask. That's 61,000. 34% between the market, the calls are sizzling, sizzling about two and a half times uh, the five-day average volume. Now, this is significant for a very specific reason. It's because if we start to see the calls that are being bought here, the market makers have to hedge. Then if we see that positive feedback loop, that gamma squeeze, it could propel into a short squeeze. And so if we look at uh, RGTI here, um, we'll look at it on, on, uh, on Yahoo Finance, just look at the short interest. What you'll see is that 22% of the float shorted. Now, what makes this time different than the past short squeeze is the fact that we're seeing a lot more volume traded on RGTI now. And so we may not quite get the squeeze we did in the past, but it does make it interesting for a near-term move, right? We're not like we were back here, but you can see how long this persisted even at higher levels, turning over the float uh, or close to the float almost on a daily basis. Could we see a 16 handle, a 20 handle in RGTI? It's possible. 
But what this shows is that the risk is the upside, the opportunities to the upside versus as much downside risk in the immediate future. You look at IONQ, for example, right? This is another one. We go back to the scan tab here. IONQ, we'll kind of scroll down this list here. Um, we got IONQ right here, right? February 45 calls, likely mostly bought, right? So again, we go back to IONQ, 45, this is up here, gives us a short-term target. Could there be a $10 move in IONQ? It's very reasonable. Again, what kind of short interest? And with many of these companies where it gets interesting is they, a lot of them have over 20% of the float shorted. So again, the potential of a short squeeze, this is 10%. Again, a small short ratio, which shows that versus average volume, it's kind of on the small side. But again, 12% short interest there. Um, what about QUBT? So again, another one on the list. Again, on the option, we're seeing big time call option activity. 22.5% of the float is shorted. So you could go down the list, SMCI. And what you're seeing is that a lot of these companies are experiencing very high, have very high short interest, which could lead to a big move. You look at SMCI, 2.8 short ratio, a bit higher. And what you're seeing with SMCI, it's already starting to move, right? Based on some of this news, you can see we've had the squeeze, it's been going on, and it's gone from 30 to 60, doubling in price the last couple of weeks. Again, are we about to see some of these other stocks follow? On semiconductor, again, up 6%, breakout day, clearing the prior high here. Again, this could be a rather significant move in on semiconductor, right? You could go LAES, another stock seeing some option activity here. Again, basing at the lows, we saw the pre prior kind of quantum computing short squeeze we got in late December. We may about to see something very similar occur in these companies. And again, as you look at the, the, the option trade, again, let's go back to RGTI here. Um, again, this is kind of the poster child back here, that short squeeze one that I followed. And I saw some significant option activity in prior back here, November, December. Again, seeing that kind of rematerialize here, does it create an opportunity? And when you look at high short interest stocks, what happens is the volatility skew is oftentimes pretty favorable. Look how we're declining here, out here, we're increasing. What that does, it makes these spreads cheap. You can buy the lower strike, sell the higher strike, buy a 12, sell a 14, and all of a sudden it costs you 50 cents on a $2 wide spread and $12, where is it? 12 bucks is right here. We start to push through to 15, 16. You might be able to quickly get out of that for a 70, 80% gain by buying the 12 and selling the 14. A lot of these stocks are in this position and the high short interest is causing that positive skew and really sets it up for these long call verticals to be able to be played. We look at QUBT, does it have the same degree of liquidity? Same price setup. Again, thousands of contracts and open interest. Again, we're looking at what kind of upside opportunity, 30 days out. Notice the volatility skew again. You could buy the eight, sell the 10, cost you what, 55 cents? Well, guess what? Where's the $10 strike? We get to 1250, you might even have a chance to close this out for a 70, 80% gain. So a lot of these stocks are setting up like this. They have great skew because of the high short interest, creating a real cheap kind of speculative opportunity. Yeah, we could break down and we go nowhere, but given the short interest, the option activity, my assessment is the, the upside risk is here more so than the downside in the very near term. And that's a way to consider looking at this space or trading this space from a limited risk, high reward strategy, Define risk, and again, you have the high return potential if we get the bigger moves. And if we get to 10, you could sell that spread and buy another spread. There's lots of opportunities to continue to parlay this if we get a bigger squeeze by just rolling the vertical. But I wanted to call attention to this because this is something that's happening today on the back of Microsoft's major on a news. Anyway, that's all I got for today. We'll catch you back next week. Thank you.